roof is almost done. Had a couple little spots in the front. I need to go and sand all this in here. I need to sand everything in the drip rail and get ready for seam sealer. But it's really smooth, came out really well. Back of the cab's almost done. A couple of spots that I wiped that I'm gonna sand. This primer, this VP2050, VP2050 primer is really good primer. I really like it. But it is kind of hard to block. It sets up and gets pretty tough to block, kind of like a spray poly, something along those lines. But it seems to lock everything down really well, so I like it. But since it's tough to cut, I've cut all this. All this is in 120 grit. 180 doesn't seem to cut enough. So I go with 120. Now since I've still got a lot of primer on this and it doesn't look like I've broke through in very many spots at all, I'm going to guide coat it, lock it down to 180, and then we're going to prime it with a high build urethane primer, something that's easier to sand for our final sanding before paint. Another thing to keep in mind is you don't want to stack up too much primer. So that's another reason we're cutting it down now. Because we've got all this area that we did not go through on. So we know we've got plenty of primer there. So now's the time to cut out the 120 scratches with 180, as well as take a little more primer off before we put more on. You don't want to just stack primer. All right, so everything's in 180. All the cracks and crevices are scuffed with a red scotch bright. It's cleaned off. Now we go around and tape up the joints and get ready to apply seam sealer. So there's all kinds of seam sealers out there. I'm gonna be using Sim. I'm gonna use mostly these three products here. Regular seam sealer, a high build self-leveling seam sealer, and a self-leveling seam sealer. The biggest difference between these three is the flow rate. There's a great video they have on YouTube. You can check it out. It'll kind of give you an idea of what they do. But basically, this one's gonna stay where you put it. This one's gonna move a little bit. It's gonna self-level, but not too extreme. This is gonna run off in the floor. So for a, a larger gap, I'm gonna use this so that it stays where I put it. For this roof, I'm gonna use this for the first pass. There's probably gonna be a couple of passes made on this roof. I'm gonna use this first, which is gonna fill in the, the bigger depressions and spot welds, gaps and things, without running off into the floor. And it's also not gonna, if, if there is a hole between the seams, it's not gonna disappear. This stuff will probably just seep into the inside of the cab before it stops running. So this will be the main one I start with. And then to make it super nice and level, we'll put this on top of it once the other is dried. So for this pass, I'm just trying to fill in the heavy pinch welds, spot welds. And where the panels come together, that big step down, I wanna fill that in. So the high build self-leveling will give me a good surface to put the self-leveling on top of. The self-leveling is gonna give me the final look that I'm after, which is super smooth. 
in a seam like this, you're gonna use the regular heavy bodied or medium bodied seam sealer. Something that's gonna stay in that crease, in that crack when you put it in there. If you try to use a self leveling in here, it's just gonna run out. All right, let's get this thing taped up. So the, this seam right here will also get seam sealer. Just gonna get it pushed in really nice and tight. Give us a nice smooth finish. It's not gonna crack. I've sanded that really good inside. This up here, you, you're gonna get, the stuff has a tendency to get everywhere. So give yourself a little more room. Don't just try to give yourself, you know, a little bit of room to work with. Go ahead and put some tape up there and that way if you get some on there, it's a lot easier than trying to clean it off of this. If you get spots of seam sealer on your paint, it's hard to get off. So the best thing to do is to tape it up. And if you want to, you could put paper over the whole thing if you do get seam sealer on the roof, wipe it off immediately. It's hard to sand off. Whenever you open these up and you pop the top off, you want to equalize these two tubes so that the material is the same on both sides. There's usually a little bit of an air pocket. So we'll run just a little bit out. Until they're equal. See how one side's coming out but not the other? You want to go until both sides are coming out and no air bubbles. They're going to come out at different rates because they're different size tubes, but you want them equal. So you equalize it, then you put on your mixing tip. And you run a little bit out. So you want to make sure that it comes out mixed very well. Just trying to put a nice even amount without getting too carried away. And then I'll smooth it out with my finger. If there's not enough, you'll see that it doesn't smear.
So we've got to get this in and get that tape off before it sets up. If it sets up on top of that tape, it's not coming out from under it. Trying to get all this untaped before it starts setting up. Try to pull it away from it so it creates a nice, nice line. See a couple of spots, it didn't quite do what I wanted it to, but we'll have to let it dry before we can mess with any of it. I've got the cab sitting lower in the front, kind of raked forward. The reason I did that, because this lip, this drip rail in the front has an angle to it when it sits level. I didn't want all the seam slitter to run to the back of the pocket here, toward the back and lean and go against the roof because I didn't want it to just pile up against it. So I lean it forward a little bit, kind of prevent that. It's not such a big deal with this seam sealer, but when we go to the self leveling, it's a huge deal. Seam sealers and the drip rail. Doesn't look too bad. We'll let it harden up. We'll go around and we'll sand over it just a little bit. There's a little edge that I want to get off before I prime. But you want to prime over it so you can see what it's going to look like. Looks pretty good. Once it's primed, we'll know if we're gonna leave it or if we're gonna mess with it some more. So that's the high build self-leveling. See, it's gonna leave some ridges and stuff where you can see the spot welds. We may sand that down, get rid of any flaws we can find and put the self-leveling on top of that and let it just smooth itself on out. So there's our roof after it's been primed everything's looking really good this rear seam turned out just like i wanted it to i've seen some people try to get rid of this seam but the way the the back panel and the, the roof skin come together there's spots where one's lower than the other and it kind of alternates so if you try to get rid of it it really shows the unevenness i think it looks a lot better when it's just a nice seam sealed joint. The drip rails look really good. The front looks really good. We'll probably still sand this down and put the self leveling in there just to get it a little bit slicker.
You can see the factory spot welds through the seam sealer, which is fine. A lot of people leave it like that. We'll probably try to get it just a little bit smoother. Overall, pretty tickled with it.